Hello sewing people of the internet. In this video I'm going to give you my thoughts on why the Sailrite Ultrafeed is the best portable walking foot machine on the market and why I don't have a very high opinion of all the machines that look just like it. Because this video is going to be so long, if you don't want to wait, uh, I will tell you this. Yeah, this machine functions, you know, more or less the same. Like, as far as will it sew the same kind of stuff that that machine will, yeah, it seems to. Um, I will show you in great detail why I think this is a piece of junk, but if you absolutely need a portable walking foot machine and you absolutely cannot afford a Sailrite, and the only option you have is one of these knockoff machines. I mean, I don't recommend it, but I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it doesn't work at all. It, it works pretty much the same. So, that's that. But I think it's a piece of junk. Or at least this one is. Okay, so a couple of things I want to get out of the way right up front. This is going to be a long video, and a lot of it is going to be my opinion. I will try to point out when I'm uh, spouting opinion versus fact, but there's no way I'm going to be able to keep up. So... Uh, just know that you need to fact check anything I say if you're trying to make a decision about this or just forming your own ethical opinion about it. But this is a subject that's been near and dear to me for a long, long time. I do have a bias that my opinion comes from. Uh, I don't have any official affiliation with Sailrite. Those of you who watch my channel for some time already know they provided a machine for me for review. They provided a worker bee motor for me for review. This machine I purchased with my own money. Uh, and I bought several other Sailrite items, including this Sailrite uh, Ultrafeed Industrial Style Table, uh, with my own money. So I like Sailrite products. I like them as a company. Uh, I don't have an affiliation. I don't make money from you buying their products. My opinion on them is based on my opinion on them. That's it. But I have a very clear bias towards Sailrite and against the, the copy variant versions of the machine. Uh, and I'll get into why that is. And a lot of it really is just my own personal ethics. So I'm, I will probably let that bleed into this video. But I also want to talk about the difference in quality in this particular machine. Another caveat I want to get out of the way is there is no way I can buy an example of each of the variants of the portable walking foot machine on the market. To my knowledge, Rex, Barracuda, Conso, uh, so line maybe, um, geez, there's at least two or three others that I'm forgetting the name of. There, there's half a dozen or more companies that sell this exact same machine. I don't know if any of them are better than any others. I don't know if they all come from the same factory. I, I kind of suspect that, but, uh, so the only comparison I can make in this video is between my Sailrite, my other Sailrite, the Thompsons I used to own, and this machine. It's entirely possible that a different brand of machine solves some of the problems that I see in this one. I don't know. It's also possible that because this machine is older, a newer version solves some of those problems. And again, I still have the ethical issues, but as far as the quality is concerned, I'm just comparing this old machine to a brand new one. So it's not exactly apples to apples. So with that said, uh, I guess let me talk a little bit about what I know to be the history not only of these machines, but kind of copy and stuff in general. So there's a long history of design copying or stealing in sewing machine manufacturing in particular, but really in general in all kinds of manufacturing. I kind of shy away from talking about guns on this channel, but if you're into guns, uh, you may be familiar with the venerable Colt 1911 design. Even if you're not into guns, you've almost certainly seen one. And another good example is the AR-15, uh, most examples of which are not AR-15s. Uh, they're, they're variants of or copies of the AR-15 design. Uh, once a design is no longer protected by patent, then I guess anybody can make their own version of it. And sometimes those versions can be improvements on the original design, and sometimes they can be cheap pieces of junk. So there's a long history of companies making copies of existing designs or making variants of a design that many people make and, and each company may put their own spin on or just take advantage of the popularity of a design and 
uh, make a cheaper version by cutting corners in manufacturing or whatever advantage they can capitalize on to be able to produce something that is sellable. This Conso 225 is a direct copy of a Singer 111W155 and I don't know if it was produced at the same time that the Singer was in production but I kind of think it was. I don't know if it was produced in violation of any uh, patent or you know infringing on any uh, laws of any kind. It was I think this machine was maybe made in the 1940s but I don't actually know. So uh, if this were being produced today side by side with a currently produced Singer 111 then I might have a different ethical feeling on owning this machine but at this point it doesn't matter anymore like whatever whatever laws were broken or ethical violations that took place happened before I was born and now this is just a useful machine to me but again I pointed out as an example of there's a long history of companies copying existing designs and producing their own version whether illicitly or not so I say all that to say that the Sailrite Ultra Feed is based on the Thompson Mini Walking Foot. To the best of my knowledge, Daytho produced the Thompson Mini Walking Foot machine first. As far as I can tell, that was the first Mini Walking Foot machine of this design. If anybody knows that to not be true, please post a comment and let me know, but please give me a source. I've had people suggest that it was another company. Somebody said it was a, an Australian or a New Zealand company. And, I, I think they got that backwards. I still think that was a, a variant of the Thompson. But I, I can't find any solid information either way. So as far as I know, Daytho produced the Thompson Mini Walking Foot. Sailrite entered into an agreement with them to produce their own version of the machine. And then after Daytho's patent expired, Sailrite just produced their own version and made some changes and got their own patents on their design. I don't have the specifics of Sailrite's patents uh, committed to memory, but I think they're relatively minor things. You can read a lot of this on Sailrite's website if you're interested. As I understand the story, when Sailrite contracted with a manufacturer in China to produce their machines for them, they later discovered that that factory was producing machines and selling them out the back door under their own label or other labels. And so they moved to another factory or whatever. And ever since then, basically, there's been these other machines on the market continually being produced. The deal is, is that when you hire a manufacturing facility and you invest in the tooling and the design work and prototyping and all that stuff, then if that manufacturing facility doesn't have any reason not to or no you know, re legal ramifications or anything to stop them, uh, they can just produce stuff on that same tooling. They don't have to incur the same design expenses or tooling costs because you've already paid for that. And then they can sell stuff for cheaper. I do have some actual experience in manufacturing in general, not in the production of sewing machines. But I am aware of the concept of items being produced that did not meet the required quality level for the company for which they were being produced but still being functional and those items then being relabeled as a different brand and sold for a, a lower cost. Um, I don't know if that's the entirety of what happens with these machines. I suspect not, but I suspect at some point that that has probably been the case. At any rate, the current status as I understand it is this. Daytho no longer produces the Thompson machine. Sailrite produces the Ultrafeed. They are manufactured in China and set up and tuned and delivered to their final destination from their facility in the USA. And then, as I understand it, all the other brands that look just like this are produced at factories in China and, to the best of my knowledge, don't have any kind of customer support network or I don't even know who you would contact for any of these machines to have any kind of support. I, I honestly don't know. Maybe it's fantastic, but... Uh, I, I'm not aware of anything providing the kind of customer support and information and stuff that Sarah does. So I'm not a patent attorney. I don't know if these machines violate any current patents at some point in the past. I think they maybe did, but uh, I don't know if there's any legal reason why these machines can't be produced. My personal ethics are that 
you know, from my understanding, Sailrite has put a lot of effort and expense into improving the original design and continuing to innovate new parts for it, new products, and also providing awesome customer support. Whereas, to my knowledge, all of the other manufacturers of lookalike machines just produce cheap machines that look the same and maybe function the same, uh, but don't put any effort into improving the design or innovating new products or you know helping the sewing community in any way. So for me, yes, this machine is more expensive, but I'd rather spend my money with this company than a company that's just basically taking advantage of the opportunity to make a product from existing tooling and designs without contributing any work uh, to the process or improving a design. The one thing I will say that I have seen improved on this is a couple of uh, manufacturers, I think Soline for sure, and there may be others, have a version of this machine that has a larger throat space, so a nine inch throat. At least that's something, at least that's an innovation. I would argue that, like, you know, at that point, you might as well just probably have an industrial machine, like a full size machine. Um, you know, if you want a portable machine, it being small is a help. But there may be some people for whom a slightly larger but still portable machine is exactly what they need. And again, at least that's some kind of an innovation. Uh, so credit where credit's due, uh, that is an interesting uh, wrinkle in my ethical argument here. Okay, so let's get into some of the details of this machine. Uh, I bought this machine at a thrift shop. Uh, I paid, I think, $150 for it, and it was missing the throat plate, and it doesn't have the spool pin slash thread guide on the top. Uh, I have no idea what brand it is. It comes exactly, or came exactly as you see it, with no indication of the brand. It didn't come with a manual. It appears to me to be an older version of, of this style of machine. But, I mean, there's not really that much difference from what I've seen online between the older ones and newer ones. But again, it's possible that whatever brand this is, if you bought a new one, maybe some of the things that I'm going to criticize have been improved. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I don't know how old this machine is, and I don't know how hard it's been used or what its history is. It does work. This machine came with a uh, plastic pedal. It doesn't have the old metal pedal, so I don't know if that helps age this machine. My Thompson machines came with metal carbon pile pedals, uh, but this is just an electronic plastic pedal. The speed control on this is not very good. I kind of think that's because the pedal is old and not in the best condition. I don't know that it's necessarily a design flaw of the machine, um, but it, it's not that great. The motor that came on this machine is an AlphaSo motor. It's a different brand from what came on my Sailrite Ultrafeed LS1, but otherwise it seems similar. Uh, I don't know if there's any performance advantage or disadvantage between these two motors. The power seems similar to what I remember from my Ultrafeed. I've switched the motor to the Worker B motor on my Ultrafeed now, so I don't, don't really have a direct comparison between the two, but it seems about the same. The main thing I noticed about this machine when I got it is the fit and finish is terrible compared to the Ultrafeed machines. And I have had an opportunity to inspect a friend's older Ultrafeed. I want to say it was maybe a 2008 machine. Um, and I wondered if perhaps an older Ultrafeed would also have the same fit and finish issues that this did but uh, it did not. It, it looked just like my newer Ultrafeed, so um, maybe uh, maybe really old ones are different, I don't know. But when I say fit and finish, I literally mean the finish. The finish on this machine uh, is just really rough in the texture. Um, it's Maybe it's fine, maybe that's advantageous in some way, maybe it's a tougher finish, I don't know, but it looks cheap and feels cheap. It feels inconsistent. Um, you know, it's a sewing machine, it's not a Rolls Royce, but it just, you know, I, I presume that these machines are cheaper for some reason, and one of those reasons appears to be 
that they just didn't spend as much time or money into uh, finding and applying the best finish that one could hope for. Again, that doesn't affect the function in any way that I'm aware of, but it's not the most attractive finish. One of the biggest uh, things I noticed was this top cover doesn't even fit correctly. It's set back almost a quarter of an inch on this end, uh, and it's not like screwed into the wrong place. It's just when they manufactured it, they made it crooked or drilled the hole in the wrong place or something. Um, again, does it make it not so well? No, it's fine. But, you know, when you're spending even, even the amount of money one of these sells for, I would hope that the parts all fit together correctly. I, I've seen pictures of other variant knockoff machines and haven't noticed this before. So maybe that was just something with this particular machine or this particular manufacturer, whoever it is. But again, just no attention to detail, no quality control here. That that, that, that got shipped that way is it's pretty bad. And by the way, this is definitely, to me, I don't see any way that this could have happened uh, by being dropped or some kind of damage or something. There's no indication of any damage anywhere else. It's just not sitting where it's supposed to sit. And it's got a screw that goes through here that can only be in one place. So there's, there's no way that could have happened afterwards. This was shipped that way for sure. One of the big disadvantages of all of the knockoff machines is that they use the old style stitch length and reverse lever that... I had on my Thompsons and came originally on the old Sailrite models and the, the new lever on the current model Ultrafeed is just so much better than this. Um, I've heard that there are machines out there that are copying the, the current Sailrite version. I haven't seen that, but this is, this is one reason why I would buy a Sailrite over one of these machines because this is just much less convenient to use. Again, if you're buying a machine on the used market and you don't have a choice or you really can't afford it, I understand, but uh, this is definitely not an improvement. And again, this is an area that if a company was going to produce a portable walking foot machine of this design and took it upon themselves to improve upon this lever and make it more user friendly and faster, then it would be hard for me to argue that they weren't putting some effort into making a better machine to continue to use this old design that doesn't work very well just illustrates my point that some of these companies are just not trying one thing that really jumped out to me and unfortunately there's no way for me to show you this uh, you really have to feel it but the upper tension assembly on this thing just feels like utter garbage it's just it's super thin and flimsy feeling it works i'm not saying it doesn't work but it does not inspire confidence that it's going to last a long time maybe it'll be fine i don't know but i just know that the one on the sailrite feels like a better piece of gear than this does there is an innovation on this machine uh, that unfortunately I don't have a light bulb for, but it actually has an integrated light inside the in plate here. Um, that seems like a good idea. I don't know how effective it is because, again, I don't have a bulb to fit it. But uh, kudos to whatever company this is for at least making some addition to the machine. I would probably just as soon use the the magnetic flexible light. The way this is set up, the light would just be coming out of the back here. I don't know, maybe that's perfect. I, I honestly wish I could tell you how it works, but um, in any event, I, I will give them credit, whoever this is, that at least they did put a light in it, and that is an innovation. So to really see what's egregious about this particular machine, you have to look inside and underneath. The machining and finishing of the internal parts of this machine are just bad, and you know, I'm of the opinion that even if a piece doesn't need to be finished to a, a high degree to function, you know, how well something is finished does uh, speak a lot to me about how much care went into its construction. And apparently zero care went into anything that was not visible from the outside of this machine. And not much went into what's visible on the outside, frankly. But so... Seeing the casting and machining flaws that are in this, uh, you know, I definitely would not want to invest money into a machine like this personally. 
The machining on the parts inside the Sailrite UltraFeed machines is vastly superior to what I saw on this particular machine. And I looked at my uh, UltraFeed LSZ1 and my LS1 and my friend's older LS1. And uh, I don't have my Thompsons anymore. I sold them so I could buy this machine. But, you know, I've been inside them both and I don't recall seeing anything as bad as what was inside this machine. It does support the conclusion that Sailrite machines have higher quality standards and better quality control than at least this machine. Just another example of some of the differences in the quality. On this knockoff machine, the needle plate stands up from the deck of the machine or the bed of the machine, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch almost, and it's a hard, sharp edge. Like, again, I can't really have you feel this, but it's almost painfully sharp. On the Sailrite machine, the needle plate also stands proud of the deck. It feels like a little less, but that's probably just because it's been very nicely beveled. So even though it does stick up a little bit, it's a nice smooth transition for both your fingers and the fabric to go over. I can't draw any conclusions about the uh, throat plate on that machine because it didn't come with one. So. Despite my clear bias for Sailrite, uh, I don't want it to be said that I'm being completely unfair. And I do want to point out one issue I've had with my new UltraFeed. After I took this cover off to get the pictures of the interior components and put it back on, uh, I didn't notice when it happened, but there's a little chip in the paint here that I assume happened when I put the cover back on. Uh, that could be my clumsiness, but it is a little egregious that a machine that costs this much money got chipped that easily. Uh, if I were really concerned about it, I'm sure I could put a little touch-up paint on it and make it relatively difficult to notice. Uh, and I'm not the kind of person who cares that much about a chip in a machine that I mostly use for work type stuff anyway. But other people may feel differently about their very expensive sewing machine. So uh, I, I do have to say that was a little disappointing that it got chipped that easily. You don't have to take the cover off all that often, but you do have to take it off to properly oil the machine. So it would have been nice if that didn't happen. I have zero doubt that if I reached out to Sailrite about this, that they would resolve it to my satisfaction because that's one of the big advantages of Sailrite is they have awesome customer service and follow-up. Uh, however, I'm not that concerned about it. But I do want to point it out because you know, some people might be really upset by that. To do a side-by-side -side sewing comparison of these machines is pretty much irrelevant. From a motor standpoint, this one has the worker bee motor on it, and there's just no comparison between that and the standard household motor. Uh, and as I showed in the little bit of sewing demonstration I did with this, it feeds fabric just fine and, and sews fine. I mean, it's, you know, I could sew on them both for hours and maybe discover something about this that doesn't work as well. Uh, you know, more than likely, they're both going to function about the same. This is more about what's a better way to spend your money. Since before I ever owned a Sailrite UltraFeed, uh, and maybe before I owned my Thompson, people have been asking me about my opinion about the Sailrite UltraFeed and my opinion on the copies of the Sailrite UltraFeed. And my opinion has been and continues to be pretty much the same. And that is, I think that the copies of the UltraFeed, from an ethical standpoint, I won't buy them and I question whether their quality is as good as the UltraFeed. It's possible that one of the companies or one or more of the companies that make copies of the UltraFeed produce fine machines. I don't know. Anecdotally, I have heard from uh, viewers of my channel who have machines of, of different brands that have had to do quite a bit of work, including filing things down and, and things to make the machines function well. Uh, but I've also heard from other people who are quite happy with their machines. In my opinion, if you can afford it, you should buy a Sailrite. Uh, I, this is kind of an American-centric opinion. If you live outside of the United States, this part won't matter to you. But I you know, like to support American companies when I can. And even though the Sailrite Ultrafeed is not produced in America, very few of the products that we buy in America are produced in America, even those produced by American companies. 
you know, Sailrite is an American company and they employ people in their facilities in the United States and they put effort into making the machines right before they get delivered to you. They don't come straight over from China to your house. And that does have some meaning to me. Everybody in the world needs employment and should be supported for the work that they do. And I'm not trying to take away from people who are producing things in other countries. But as an American, that's a little bit of it for me. But quite frankly, even if they weren't an American company, the fact that I can get somebody on the phone if I need to, they respond to emails very well, they have a very comprehensive website, an awesome YouTube channel with tons and tons of videos that not only show you how to use the machine, maintain the machine, make minor repairs on the machine, but also projects that you can make with these machines and their other products. Whatever company this is doesn't do that. Now, does that mean that you as an individual have to pay a lot more money for this machine because of that? I mean, maybe not, but you know, you get what you pay for. And on the point of you get what you pay for, there's a reason why these machines are less expensive. Those reasons can vary from they didn't invest in the upfront costs of design and tooling, they cut corners on quality control or materials quality or fit and finish. Whatever the reason or reasons may be, they're not selling it for less money to be charitable to you. There's a reason why it's cheaper. And maybe those reasons are reasons you can live with, and maybe they're not. That's up to you to decide. I realize that there's going to be a variety of opinions on this topic, and I encourage you to share your opinions in the comments section. I would prefer to hear uh, arguments made from the position of having actual information and sources for that information. So, for example, I, I received a comment years ago from someone who made the claim that Sailrite just buys this style of machine off the shelf from the manufacturer in China, sticks their label on it, and sells it as their machine. That's clearly not true. That's, like, demonstrably not true. But uh, if, if you have a claim like that, and that claim is supported by actual evidence that we can all see, then, you know, I would definitely prefer that kind of evidence if we're going to share our opinions about this kind of stuff. I sincerely hope that this video at least provides some clarity and insight if you're considering either a Sarite Ultra Feed or going the cheap route and buying one of the knockoffs. Again, I know a lot of this is my unsubstantiated opinion, and you should definitely take that with a grain of salt, but having at least experienced this one example and three Sailrite machines and two Thompson machines, my pre-existing opinion seems to be supported by at least this one piece of evidence. I think that the Sailrite is the better option. Yes, it's more expensive. It's more expensive for a reason. But I think unless you absolutely can't afford a Sailrite, and this is the only way you can get a portable walking foot machine. You're just better off buying the better machine, even if it is more expensive. If you find one like I did at a thrift store or, you know, on the used marketplace, at a garage sale or whatever, uh, you know, you can always try it. I mean, if, if you buy one of these for $150 on a Lark, then you're probably not taking money out of Sailrite's pocket because you weren't going to spend many hundreds or over a thousand dollars on an ultra feed, you know, the same way. Uh, and maybe buying one of these cheap and used might drive you to then buy an ultra feed later when you realize that you could do better, but get the same, you know, functionality of a portable walking foot machine. So, you know, if, if you find a used one and it uh, tickles your fancy, then, you know, maybe that's what you need. But I don't really see a lot of these on the used marketplace. Oddly, I've seen more sale rights and at, at quite high prices than I've seen the knockoff brands. I would have thought that I would see more of the knockoff brands on the used marketplace. Um, and I'm not trying to imply that I'm not seeing them because they all catastrophically break and, you know, get thrown away. But uh, I just don't see them a lot on the market to make comparisons about the used values and stuff. But anyway... All right, I've gone on about this enough. If you have questions, please post them in the comment section below. If you like what I do here, even if you disagree with me, you can always hit, click the thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, click the thumbs down. That's fine too. Uh, maybe leave a comment and tell me what I did wrong. If you're not a subscriber, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time.